I'm here with Ben Oakley, a young man from Wollongong who, due to unforeseen circumstances, has been forced into advocating for cannabis. Ben, what can you tell me about the condition you have? My condition is called stiff person syndrome. It's a one in a million neurological condition um, that only affects four and a half thousand of us worldwide. So basically there's no understanding of really much. I mean, there's no cure. Um, there's barely treatments for it. You know. So when were you diagnosed with this? Uh, I first had symptoms on the 21st of November 2012 and I didn't actually get a full um, diagnosis until um, another year later. So it took quite some time and a lot of specialists throwing me um, around, they had no idea what was going on. So um, there were a lot of theories of what it could have been and that was quite tough on myself, not knowing what was going on. Mm. And how does stiff person syndrome affect your life? How has your life changed because of it? I've gone from a triathlon fit um, young man to basically what we see here today. I mean, I've improved a hell of a lot since this first happened. When this first happened, I dropped 15 kilos. I went from triathlon fit to basically bed bound. I, I couldn't move, um, I couldn't even roll myself in the bed. So I lost all my independence. Mm. Um, you know, and it's, it's really, it's been tough. Um, you know, but I guess one of the easier parts for me is I've always been a bright, happy, easygoing person. I always sort of look at the brighter, positive things of life. So that's really helped um, because I generally just smile and get on with it. Mm. So. so when you were diagnosed, when you finally got a diagnosis, what sort of treatments or ways of dealing with the condition were you given by doctors? The doctors put me on a treatment of IVIG, which is intravenous immunoglobulin. Uh, I was on that for about a year and a half to two years, and then I started to plateau out. Um, it was helping, but not enough. And the doctors decided to cut my treatment, um, and they didn't decide to put anything in its place. So I was u being used as a test dummy pretty much, you know. My life was at stake and we had no idea what was going to happen. I mean, so when that happened to you, did you or your family think about alternative ways you could treat this? We had actually thought of medicinal cannabis prior to. Both my parents are ex-nurses and they'd done a bit of research. Um, they suggested it to me one day and I turned around and said, no, I'm not going on an illegal drug, no, no way. Um, it was very stupid of me, um, I was quite hesitant to do so, but you know, one day I was just in too much pain, none of the pharmaceutical drugs were helping, and yeah, a simple plant changed it, changed it all for me. You know. So what was it like the first time you used cannabis to treat your condition? The first time I used medicinal cannabis, I actually gave a pain rating to Dad a 3 out of 10. I had not been that low ever in this whole time that I've been like this you know my average pain rating was about uh, six to a seven you know to have my pain rating so low as what I did we knew it was a game changer and we said well you know we're going to continue with this regardless of what the doctors thought because they didn't want me going on it mm. but it's been the best thing that's happened to me since so and so because you've had such a great improvement because of it um, is that why you decided to go into advocacy for it? Most definitely. I mean, um, it would have been so much easier if we'd just stayed in the shadows. Um, I don't like public speaking. I really, I don't like it at all. Um, I struggled to do it at high school, to speak in front of 20 kids. I said to my teacher, I'm not doing it. So to speak in front of 350 to 400 people these days, um, it's still not easy, but you know this is too important not to. I don't care how much anxiety and stress it gives me and um, how tough it is. It's something that needs to be done and the only way to conquer your fears is to face them head on. So it's too important not to um, be quiet about it. You know, we have to get out there and be as loud about this as possible because so many people desperately need it. Great, thank you for talking to us today. No worries. Yep.